Um, hi, everyone. My name is Denise Hughes. I'm the Senior Director of Programming for the Angelica Film Center and Angelica Anywhere. Today, we're going to be talking with Juan Jose Campanella, who's the award, um, Academy Award winning director of The Secret in Their Eyes. And also, he also had another uh, nominated film for the, Academy, for the Oscars, which was uh, The Son of the Bride. Today, we're going to be talking about his latest film, which is called The Whistle's Tale. So welcome, Juan. Thank you for my uh, so thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much, Denise. It's a pleasure to, to be here. Okay, thank you. So first of all, congratulations. It's such a fun, smart, uh, different type of film. Like we really, we really enjoyed it when, when we saw it with our team. So uh, congratulations on that. Well, thank and, you so much. Uh, <laughs> and I wanted to ask you uh, first, were these film comes from, as I understand, this is a remake of an Argentinian film from the 70s by uh, Jose Martinez Suarez, right? Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. That um, is correct. Yeah. So how this, how did you decide to do this remake and tell us a little bit about it? Well, this, this, this movie was a, a long time in the making. The first draft of it was from 1997. Actually, the the uh, our protagonists, the, the old film people that are our protagonists, uh, belong to a decade before, you know, to the 50s uh, <laughs> when we first wrote it. So, uh, the, uh, as you said, it is based on an Argentine movie of 1976 called uh, Los Muchachos de Antes No Usaban Arsenico, which means okay. like the, the, the guys from yesterday, the, fellow, the fellas from yesterday uh, didn't use arsenic. Uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's a movie that was very little seen, uh, but it was. But it's a very important movie among us film people. Uh, the movie opened uh, in a in a very bad release date, which was two weeks after the military coup of 1976, and there was a curfew in Argentina. So it's very hard to to get people to go to the theaters when it's forbidden to get out of your house. <laughs> yeah. The exhibitors sadly didn't understand this reason and the movie came and went from the theaters but it it it, it had a, a, an incredible following because the original movie is a downright downright homage to the Ealing Studios movies uh, uh very very dark in its humor um i uh, always liked it and i thought it would be a great vehicle to to first of all add a touch of Lubish, a touch of Billy Wilder to it and make it a, a funnier and a little brighter in its humor and also had it be an homage to film people. They were not all film people in the original uh, and, and, uh, and I really wanted to play with the audience uh, in terms of um, how, you know, by, by, by making the characters all actors and a filmmaker and a writer, you know, they always look at life as if it was a movie. So, you know, two things. <laughs> One of them, we can play with the form because they analyze what's happening to them as if, as if it was a movie, which is also the movie that we're watching. But also um, this feeling that I'm having more and more every day in my life that I wish lives were a bit like the movies, like the old movies, <laughs> you know, especially after this year, you know, which was completely unexpected. Um, yeah, uh, you can so, say that. Yeah, this is uh, this this year was more like a catastrophe movie, you know, <laughs> but uh, but um, um, so so it has all those elements, you know, it has that romantic element, it has a, a, a little livelier uh, uh, side to it, and it's an homage to, you know, and a game with an audience, we involve the audience into a game about, you know, uh, movie going. Yeah, I actually was going to say that it reminded me a little bit of, of the rules of the game too, there's like a little bit. Also, also in the, in the sense that, the, that you know, that the, it's a community of people that, in, and it takes place in, in a, in one location. It's a location with a lot of, you know, a lot of sets. It's a big mansion and, you know, and, and all the outside, but it, but it is uh, secluded. It's, it's putting together under pressure in a location, yes. Yeah, but there's also that play with like the shooting and the, like the shooting and the animals and- yeah, Exactly, so, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it reminded me a little bit of that, about that. So 
let me ask you, did, did you discuss um, this film with Jose Martinez Suarez or did he ever seen the script or did he? Oh, talk yes, to him yes, about yes. He, he, saw the, he saw the script. He, he never wanted to see the script while we were working on it. Sadly, Jose passed away last year. Yeah. Uh, and, um, but uh, he got to, you know, he got to read the script and we discussed it. Uh, he was a, I had a, a, a great compliment from him, which is what I think about remakes. You know, remakes should not be trying to, re, to remake the, the, the older film, but always to me, the ideal would be to have a double bill of the, of the two movies and no, none of the movies would make, a, would spoil the other one. So, so um, uh, he, you know, when he saw the movie and he was saw it with an audience and they were all laughing, you know, and, and he, he was even found himself laughing. He said, you know, Juan, I was a, a bit afraid of what I was going to think. <laughs> and then I, I realized that it's not, uh, it's, that, it's a, that you made a different movie. It's a movie on its own, you know? So I, I really, once I thought that, I really started, sat back and enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay. so it seems that, um in the in this film like it's different with the original is like the gender roles are slightly more modernized the all the other film the the, the gender roles are, are a little outdated or the way that the characters relate to each other so how did you work that out and since it took you so long like there's mm -hmm. been so many changes in how also like the the gender roles have been changing a lot in the past five years yes. so is that also changing your script lately no, or no 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 the 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 you are right about what you say it was very you can see that very clearly in the film uh but uh my uh my the the the, the this version comes was born from from the uh, my love for the 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 actresses, the big divas in real life, you know, that I admire and love so much. And I have worked with some of them, <laughs> you know? And uh, so, so that change, those changes that you mentioned were there from the beginning of the script. The, yes, you're, you're right. The original was a very um, um, war of the genders kind of, kind of thing. And I did not, you know, I was, that was not what I, uh, what I was interested in, in telling, you know, on the contrary, as I said, you know, I, I felt the romantic aspect of it was something that is completely new to this, to this version. And, uh, and here, the, I, I focused the conflict more in the ways of approaching the world. One that is very, um, uh, very uh, bottom line oriented, um, you know, uh, uh, characterized by the by the younger people who come to the to the house, uh, and the other ones, these old friends who are not uh, uh, you know are not unaware of bottom line. They're very they're very savvy in yeah. that sense, but they also put friendship and emotions in the equation of a good life, not just the bottom line. So basically, I I you know I uh, we put that in the um, that was a, the is the main focus of the war between the characters. Yeah. Um, so age, it seems to be like a recurring theme sort of in mm -hmm. your films, like you touch, um, like it's what well, that was one of the main themes on uh, the son of the bride, then it's sort of present and the secret in their eyes. And now yes. here is full front and center. Um, but it's interesting how you are like, how you're addressing it. Um, but what seems to me like seemed to me very interesting is that even the young the the young couple that they're like at some point all the characters seem to recognize in each other like they seem to be the same version of people in like in the old and 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 older and younger generations and then it just becomes a survival of the fittest in, in, in uh, yes. a way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Well, it's a two, it's a two part question. Yes, I'm very, more than about age, I'm interested, very interested in what happens with emotions and relationships with the passage of time. All my movies have been about old love or love through the ages and how does a long-term couple deal with the with with those emotions uh i have never made a movie of boy meet girl you know and uh, and the movie ends when they start their relationship uh i you know 
I, uh, I always like to explore what happens after many, many years, also in Luna de Avellaneda or, you know, on, or Same Love, Same Rain, my first Argentine movie. Um, I'm very interested about that. The fact that the characters become old in the process, it's, a by, it's an unavoidable byproduct of that. What I'm really interested in is, is how, how does a, a couple maintain their love and how it converts a, 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 along decades. Um, that was also, as you say, full and frontal <laughs> in Son of the Bride. Uh, <laughs> that was actually it, it there. Uh, and uh, so, so the same thing happens with friendship. You know, it's uh, it's uh, what happens with the friend people who have been friends for 40 years, who are, you know, unavoidable, unavoidably on those years at some at some point they did something that turned you know against the other person. It's 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 almost unavoidable in a long term relationship. So how do you forgive? How do you forget? How do you move on from that? Uh, those are all very important uh, subjects in this movie. Um, and the second one that they see things on, on each other. I totally, I mean, totally, as I said, you know, there is a, there's the, the differences between them are shades, you know, yeah. are, are, are marginal, are maybe different angles to approaching life. As I said, one of them, you know, uh, puts also, uh, you know, emotions in the equation, the other ones a little less, but it's, it's a matter of emphasis. Our old people here, you know, paradoxically, out of all the movies I made, this one was a favorite among young people in Argentina because they're, yeah, people think that because they're old, you know, yes. ex exactly. It plays with it plays with the with the prejudices of people through 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 uh, towards old people because these are very cool, cool old guys, <laughs> you know, and uh, who have been young in the sixties and seventies, and they have loads of experience in, in terms of sex, drug and rock and roll, drugs and rock and roll. So they, they actually more than, they, than our young characters. So they don't have a, much to be taught and, and, and a lot to teach in that sense. And not much to lose either. Right? And not like... much to lose either. And that's a, that's a great combination. When you, have, <laughs> when you have a lot of experience and not much to lose, you're, you're to be feared. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> So the other part is like, well, I think like you touched a little bit on, on, on that before, but it's like, it's such a meta film about, it's a film about film with film dialogue with yes. like filmmakers actually staging like the biggest act of their life in yes. a way. <laughs> um, so it's just like, it's, it's all like, it revolves like, it's, it's like in a spiral almost, yes. right? Um, and it, it has all these, also these beautiful um, images from older Argentinian film that mm -hmm. you, you play um, against Graciela Borges' face, which is yes. that's beautiful, but also you can see different films. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? And also for those who don't know about the golden age of Argentinian cinema, who it seems like it's present in, in, in this film a lot. Yes, well, you know, yes, uh, Argentina was a huge industry, a, a huge film industry, and it was, you know, its films have been seen all, you know, were very influential all over so uh, South America, and uh, we had our, our star system and great directors and everything, and they referred to those things. But the, they referred to in, the, in a way that it just gives enough information for the audience from all over the world and even young audiences in Argentina, you know, to, to, to be able to understand and enjoy the movie. But you don't need to have knowledge, uh, knowledge of Argentine filmmaking or names, you know, it's not, it's not about that. You do, I mean, we do play, as I said before, with the forms and the conventions of films all over the world, even American films. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, if you have never seen a movie in your life, you might not enjoy this one fully. But if you're a, but if you're someone who saw, you know, like us, 200, 300, 500 movies in, in your life, then you know that you will you will have an extra an extra game because, as you said, they they their film it's it's like me, you know, I cannot avoid in my life uh, to think what would happen in a movie in and to, and, uh, in in front of every situation in my life you know so they they all they're always talking like that because for them life is a script and you develop it you know you try to build it 
in in a way that it, uh, that would make a good movie. <laughs> um, so then, about the cast, um, you you assemble a, like an all star Argentinian cast. Um, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Like, did you ever have these actors in mind? Did you? Uh, and then how did you pick, um, like if they, did they evolve as you were like, you started writing the script 20 years mm. ago, were these the same characters that you had in mind 20 years ago or did, did this change? Tell us a little when, bit about that. When we started the script with Darren Klumok, you know, who's the co-writer of the script, uh, we, all, we always had it very clear in mind that the, the, these, the four main characters had to be performed by people that had a lot of baggage. Uh, and a lot of uh, uh, movies behind them or a lot of show business behind them, uh, that at least they had to be re very recognizable to the audience, to the original country's audience. But, but even if they weren't, they would carry their star, you know, their star power through it, you know, because that was part of the, that's part of the game, you know, it's people who actually have done hundreds of movies. Uh, so, but not, we were not thinking about this cast because as I said, we started in 1997 and, and these uh, people were all in their fifties. And, <laughs> you know, they were not, they were not uh, uh, in the age bracket to, to play it. Uh, now, uh, the, the, of the four people, three of them, you know, the, the Oscar Martinez who won best actor at the Venice Film Festival is one of our greatest actors. Luis Randoni, who had, is part of the Argentine and theater, uh, film and theater history. Graciela Borges is our, you know, I, 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 I don't even know, you know, what it would be a, a mix of Meryl Streep and Bette Davis and, and, <laughs> yes. you know, and, and everything. Uh, and, um, um, and, uh, and Marcos Munstock, who might not be as familiar to, for, to people from film, but is one of the, he's a, a theater icon. Uh, he's he's a person who built my sense of humor. Uh, he's a he's the head and the uh, of Le Luthier, which is a group, a musical comedy group that uh, is a uh, you know fills stadiums in Argentina since the '60s, and uh, and you know so they're very 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 powerful. They know comedy inside out, but they know how to act it. They know how to do it without playing funny. You know, they know how to do it, playing the emotions of the scene. Yeah, the it's, timing, it's impeccable. Like, it's yeah. its so good. The way that they, they deliver the lines is just it, so you know, perfect. And it, and, it, and it can be directed. It is perfect. It, even, even uh, we were amazed, you know, because um, when you play the emotion, because there are heavy things that happen in the film, you yeah. know, emotionally and plot-wise and all that, and, and even between them. And when you don't have that knowledge of that how much of a pause do you have to do you know just a, a, is it one second longer or two seconds longer where what word do you have to put the emphasis uh the exact amount of irony in a line to make <laughs> to turn it from a dramatic line to a to a line that keeps the drama but also will, but will also make you laugh um okay. is very hard to direct in fact i was you know whenever Whenever I had a comment, you know, in that ter in terms, I was, you know, we would cut, I would go to the actor and I say, you know, I think that if in that word you put a little and they would go, I know, I know what you mean, I know what you mean, okay, let's do, let's do one more, you know, <laughs> yeah. they, uh, so we were in tune, it was such a pleasure, you know, to direct them. Okay. So speaking of script, is this like, did, so you said, you just said that you co-wrote the script and. W yes, with yeah. Darren Klumok. And did you did you wrote the the dialogues as they are delivered, or do they improvise? There seems to be some lines yeah. that they are written for, especially for Marcos. Yes. Well, no, no, it was not improvised. Uh, Marcos, as I said, had, had didn't have a lot of film experience, so he was feeling a little bit cheapish. Even though in theater on stage, he's the biggest box office draw of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. He was. He sadly he passed away this year. As another one, another, you know, reason of the, we want to forget yeah. this year. Yes, exactly. We lost our main, two, our two main humorists in history, Marcos and Kino, this year. This year. So it was, yeah. a, well, anyway, um, <laughs> moving on to 2021. Uh, the, uh, the, 
we did go over the whole script before you know there was no there was no he was very um um he 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 wanted to have the lines and the script ready before you know we did tune we did uh, fine tune some lines uh you know for him but it was before because he knew that the whole film mechanism hitting your marks uh remembering the lines repeating the takes and all that he's a theater person you know so, so he was so afraid and he said i'm acting i'm acting with these monsters of film you know that can hit their mark i don't know they have eyes on their feet he was he kept telling me <laughs> how do they do it they have eyes on their feet i don't know because he kept looking at the marks you know like <laughs> stage people do and uh, <laughs> uh and um and so so he was so afraid that the the mechanics of making a film would you know would uh, occupy his mind that he wanted to have all the all the know everything beforehand yes yeah. it's a, it's also such a clockwork kind of dialogue you know like one line fits on the other one that there isn't much room to improvisation no, and it and it builds on and like then you reference back to it as you yes, go exactly. on. It's, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it's very clever. It's also like the way that they talk. It's you know, kind of seems like the quintessential Argentina type of like <laughs> it's the way that Argentinians talk and yes. sort of like always like ironic and acid and yes you don't know if it's serious or not and exactly and they and they and they uh they uh, they always leave the people the the young guys guessing yeah are they are they are, are they serious or are they putting me on are they uh are they being ironic are they laughing with me are they laughing at me uh <laughs> you know yes yes uh we we play with that a lot too it's a it's, it's nice to watch <laughs> So how was like the relationship, like like acting together of like this older generation that they, some of them worked together before in different many times, yes, yeah, yes, 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 and yes. That, so they are used to them with this like younger generation of actors. How it how great. did it work? It was great, you know. It was it was really great. Uh, both Clara and Nicolas Fran Clara Lago and Nicolas Franchella, who played the young, uh, the, the 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 young the the, the villains. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's very clear from the beginning so i'm not i'm not spoiling anything <laughs> you know uh they uh they were great because they were they were having a lot of i mean they were at the beginning they were feeling a lot under pressure to act with these people and that they would have to stand up to them you know not yeah. not only on set but on the movie also so they had to be strong uh but uh you know um our four uh, older, you know, more experienced actors immediately put them at ease, and you know they made it part of the of the of the ritual of you know of creating this magic, and they were very much at ease, and they were great, they were phenomenal, you know, they were really uh, they helped us a lot, um, you know, they would actually sometimes tie the whole thing together because the other four, as I said, you know, they they know each other from for so many decades that sometimes it was like a high school reunion, you know. <laughs> it like and it was order. the younger actors who put order on the set. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, well, it is it is a great, great film. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and also, I wanted to ask you, are you working on anything new or what's your new, next project? I'm working on television here in America right now. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm uh, I'm working in a in a in the Law and Order SVU, which is my home. You know, it's a, the first show that 20 years ago, 21 years ago now, uh, gave me a, my first chance of the primetime television, and uh, and they're my best friends, and I have a ball always going back to that show. Um, it, it was great after 10 years that I haven't been in it. You know, to to go back and find the 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 group with more passion than they ever had. Um, after becoming the longest running show ever uh, and and also working on, a, on an Amazon new series and writing another film uh, and building a theater in Argentina so oh, well. <laughs> yes so that was so you're not busy no so the construction you know the construction stopped for this during this year because of the pandemic and luckily because I couldn't have made <laughs> everything you know so we have to open it now in the January of 2022 and we have to prepare for that because I love the stage too. Yeah. So this is for live theater, right? Is live that... legit theater, yes, yeah, but it's a 700 seat house, you know, oh, wow. so it's a big theater in downtown Buenos Aires and we have to fill it with 
with shows, hopefully. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Uh, Buenos Aires is such like a theater city town that or city that it's. Yeah, it's a third in the world next to New York and London. Oh, it's, uh, really? Yes, 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 yes. And it has a, a, a lot of a lot of theater and it's very lively and it has a huge audience, you know, that uh, that allows you to put a, a play for many months. You know, in, in that sense, it's uh, not many cities in the world. No. Allow yeah, that. theater is very central to that city. Yes, it's, yes, it's very important. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope to see you soon with your next project. Thank you very much. And uh, to me, it's an honor to be at the Angelica because, you know, I lived 20 yeah. years in New York. I'm a New Yorker too, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and it was my home for many, many years. I remember when it opened. I was there when the theater opened. So, oh, wow. <laughs> and I, yes, 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 yes. And, and, uh, and it was also, I went to NYU. So it was right in front of the gym, the NYU gym, yeah. which is now being built, you know, now the tore it down and they're building a, a huge building. And to me, it's always a pleasure that Son of a Bride and Secret in the Rise, they're all played at the Angelica and uh, yeah. it's like going back home also. Oh, thank you so much.